In this video, I'm going to talk about the code requirements of spacing outlets throughout the home. I'm not going to talk about which outlets to use in which areas, but we have an electrical playlist that has all kinds of videos on how to wire different circuits and how to do different electrical work throughout the home. I do want to mention that there are some appliances that should have their own dedicated circuit that should not be part of any other circuits in the home. Appliances that should have a dedicated circuit are any type of mounted microwaves, your refrigerators, dishwashers and garbage disposals. Although your dishwasher and garbage disposal can be on the same circuit if they don't draw enough amperage to trip the breaker. And so if you have a dishwasher, say that's drawing seven amps and a garbage disposal that draws seven amps, then you can actually put that on a 20 amp circuit and those can be um, on the same circuit together. So the whole reason of the codes with the outlet spacing is safety. So they wanna make sure that you can easily access power from different outlets without using extension cords which can pose safety hazards. So to get started, a few different rules is obstructions do not count as wall space. And so if we're trying to space outlets around a room, we're not gonna count you know, your French doors, your entry doors, any type of closet, things like that won't count uh, towards the outlet spacing. There's something they call the two, six, and 12 foot rules. And what that means is the two foot part of the rule is that all walls two feet or longer should have a receptacle. The six foot rule means that you can reach an outlet within six feet. And the 12 foot rule means that no more than 12 feet of wall space is between outlets. For my first example here, this is gonna to apply to living rooms, bedrooms, dining rooms, family rooms, game rooms, anything that basically isn't a hallway, a kitchen, or a bathroom. So using the two foot, six foot, and 12 foot rules, let's look at our room that's obviously not to scale. So let's say that our space between our hallway entrance and our door is three feet. If this is three feet between these two openings, then I know we're gonna need at least one outlet here. So I'm gonna draw my outlets in red. Next, any obstruction, meaning the door, the hallway, the double doors, or the coat closet, they need to have an outlet within six feet of them. And so, let's say with the first door, let's say we put an outlet right here. And this is within six feet. So let's just say this is five feet between our first outlet and our door. So we've met this requirement. Now what we need to do is we need to start traveling around the wall and somewhere within 12 feet of the wall length, we need to get another outlet. So let's just say that we travel another six feet and we travel another six feet and we decide we're gonna put an outlet right here. Well now we've also met the requirement here because let's just say this is three feet to the double doors. Okay, so let's keep working our way around. Let's say we wanna go six feet from the double doors. So we go six feet over and we put an outlet in. Now, somewhere within 12 feet here, let's say this is three feet and this is nine feet, say to this point, somewhere between here there has to be another outlet. So we'll just put the outlet, say here, say maybe like around seven feet. Doesn't matter as long as it meets that requirement. Now let's say from this outlet to here, let's say this is uh, 14 feet. So now we have to go from this outlet somewhere between that outlet and 12 feet, there needs to be another outlet, but we can also come off from here as well and make sure that we're within six feet of this coat closet. So we'll just put one, we'll just say, there's one somewhere around 10 feet between here and here. And then there's four feet between our coat closet and our first outlet. So we've met the requirement that's less than six feet, so we're still good to go. So we'll keep working our way around. Let's say we put an outlet here in the corner. It's also within six feet of the coat closet and we just gotta keep working our way around. So as long as none of these outlets are longer than 12 feet going along the wall, then we've met code. So you can see why code requires the spacing. 
So if you have a lamp or some small device, usually they have about six foot cords somewhere on there. So that means that, say you were gonna go put a lamp in that has about a six foot cord, you can put a lamp in and you can make it to either outlet. Of course, with the vacuum, you have a lot longer cord, so there's all kinds of places you can go. But the most important thing is, is if you have lamps or other small appliances, anything that you're putting in these rooms, it's not requiring you to use an extension cord to get over to an outlet. So just as one last example, let's say that we have the entrance to our hallway, but then let's say that we also have another door right here in the corner. So let's say that this little space here is only 18 inches. So this little space right here wouldn't require an outlet. Bathrooms are required to have at least one circuit in them. So at least you have to have at least one outlet in a, in a bathroom. The requirement here is from the edge of each side of the sink basin, you need to have an outlet within 36 inches. And sorry, I made a little bit of a mistake. When I said sink basin, I guess I meant there because I should have drawn a pedestal sink, but instead I drew an actual vanity type sink. So from the edge of the basin, somewhere within the edges of the sink, you should have an outlet. Now you only have to have one outlet at least, but the lowest you can go with an outlet is 12 inches below the top of the sink. Kitchen countertop outlets have a one foot, two foot, four foot rule meaning that any portion of the wall above a countertop wider than one foot needs to have an outlet. Outlets are required within two feet on either side of an obstruction or a sink basin, and there must be an outlet every four feet along the wall. Also, you're required to have at least two circuits serving a kitchen. So now we can start designing the outlets in our kitchen. So we know that for every obstruction, we have to have an outlet within 24 inches, within two feet of the obstruction. And so let's start with our refrigerator. First of all, we know our refrigerator is gonna have its own dedicated circuit, but that one's not gonna be included in the outlets that we're gonna put in. And so coming off the, from the refrigerator, somewhere within two feet, we have to have an outlet. And let's just say that we put it at 18 inches so that also meets the requirement for the edge of the countertop being within two feet of the outlet. Now we go from the refrigerator, come over two feet, with somewhere within the two feet, let's just say we come over two feet and we put in another outlet. Then we come over to our oven and somewhere within the edge of the oven there needs to be an outlet within two feet. Now we go over to the oven, to the other side of the oven, and we put in another outlet, let's say at two feet. And then we have to start working our way around and somewhere along the wall, within four feet, we have to have another outlet. So if we're at two feet here, there's only four feet left. Let's just put one about a foot from the edge, one foot from the corner. Well then that means with this section here being five feet to the sink, then maybe we don't want to put in anything just yet. Maybe we go to the sink and now there has to be an outlet within two feet of the sink. So now we can bring our outlet here and let's say we're at two feet again or slightly within. I mean, obviously all the twos are like slightly within the two feet, the, the two foot mark. So we come over two feet. We have three feet and one foot. So we've barely made it. So if it gets a little bit tight, you might need to adjust these just a little bit. And then right here, let's say this is 18 inches here from the sink to the edge of, to the, edge of the countertop. We're gonna need one more outlet here. Let's say that this space here is another three feet. It's important to remember that wall space is not countertop space. So as soon as you cross this line here, this is the kitchen side and then this is the rest of the house side. And so even though you have an outlet up here on the wall, 
I know we're looking down, but we have an outlet that is 18 inches from the edge of the countertop. And then we only have three feet to the door to another obstruction. So technically we've met our six foot minimum, right? But technically that's not right. As soon as you cross over from a kitchen and from the rest of the house, you have to observe the, pre the rules for the house and the rules for the countertop. So you actually have to have an outlet down here, down here on the wall. The outlet up here for the kitchen, as soon as you cross over in the kitchen, doesn't count as wall space. And just remember the kitchen has to be serviced by two different circuits. And so if I was gonna design this circuit, I might put these four outlets on one circuit and these four outlets on another circuit. This outlet cannot be on any of the kitchen circuits. The kitchen is just to be serviced by the outlets that are above the countertops. Those outlets that are part of the kitchen. So one last rule really quick. Let's say that we had our refrigerator here and we had our oven here. And let's say that this little space here, let's say we just had a little piece of countertop for some crazy reason. And let's just say that it was 10 inches. You technically wouldn't have to have a countertop outlet here because any wall space that is 12 inches or bigger needs to have an outlet. And so if you have two obstructions that are making it so your countertop space or your wall space above the countertop is less than 12 inches, you don't have to have an outlet. Hallways are a little bit trickier too. So if you have a hallway that's longer than 10 feet, you have to put in an outlet. So let's say we have a hallway that's 15 feet. We have to at least have one outlet. But that rule is only for a hallway that is longer than 10 feet without any obstructions. So let's say that we have a bedroom door here and a bedroom door here and a bedroom door here. Now let's say that this space between these two doors is only eight feet. So now we technically don't even need a, an outlet here. And let's say that this space is seven and this is eight here, or I guess it'd be a little bit less because of the door. So let's just say six and six. So now we have, this is less than 10 feet. This is less than 10 feet. And this space right here is less than 10 feet and obviously less and less. So now at this point, when we had a full hallway before that was more than 10 feet, you had to have an outlet. Now when you have a bunch of breaks in the wall because of doors, now you're exempt from putting an outlet in that area. Of course, it doesn't make any sense not to have an outlet because if you're vacuuming or something like that, you would still wanna put an outlet, at least I would, but it's not required by code. I hope this video helps kind of demystify the code requirements of outlet spacing in the home. And if any of these electrical videos have helped you out, please share them with people that might need this information. We're so grateful for everyone who has subscribed to our channel and support our channel. Thanks for watching.